Hi, I'm Willie and welcome to my channel. Thank you for being here. So what I want to talk about tonight is first I'm going to show you DigitalOcean's new pricing structure. When I need a virtual server that's not at my premise or at my customer's premise, I choose DigitalOcean. So I also have an affiliate link down there. I don't get any cash for that. They do give me some credit where I can rent servers, so that's always appreciated. So if you're going to sign up for DigitalOcean, that'll be down there. But they have new pricing. They started it around the first of the year. You get more hardware for less price. So it's cheaper and you get a better set of hardware specs. But the important thing that we're going to go over tonight is if you have SSH open to the outside world, you should never use password based authentication. You should always use key based authentication. And I don't ever like to send the private key anywhere over the internet or email or things like that we usually uh, we have secure methods for transferring those keys and a lot of times they'll even get transferred physically but let's take a look at this real quick so I'm over on DigitalOcean's site and here's their pricing and so now for five dollars a month you automatically get one gig of memory you I think you used to only get five 512 for $10 a month you get 2 gigs for $20 a month you get 4 gigs and they've added uh, some more optimized droplets like the 4 gig for $40 a month with 2 CPUs and 25 uh, gigabyte SSD and 5 terabytes of transfer and then they've also added some storage options so you get you know starting at $5 a month you can get um, 250 gigabytes of storage it's a pretty good pretty good deal and then you can do block storage as well but check it out I will use that I'll put that affiliate link down there I don't get any cash for that they give me a little bit of credit on my account and it's always appreciated so to do this to do the the way that I'm going to show you the SSH keys to set it up on your droplet it takes just a few minutes as long as you have the proper tools I'm going to put a link to the putty gen download now what putty gen is it is a program that is made by the same person that makes putty but it allows you to create RSA and DSA keys and things like that and I've got it running right here so you just come over to this link you download putty gen mine's 64 bit and then you run it and it comes up like this but the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to DigitalOcean we're gonna deploy a new droplet and for this we're gonna do an Ubuntu droplet we're just gonna do the one gig of memory uh, Amsterdam is fine for this because I'm literally gonna destroy it uh, after this so it says add your SSH keys right so if you don't add a key you're gonna get an email you're gonna get an email that has the root username but then it's also gonna have the password so they're gonna email you the password for the root account root account has power and access to everything if you have the root account you own the box right so what we want to do is we want to set up our SSH keys here so the first thing we're gonna do you can see I've already got one SSH key that's loaded into my my digital ocean because I used I use key-based authentication uh, if SSH is even open. A lot of times I'll only open SSH when I need to, and then I'll close it again on the firewall. I don't leave SSH open all the time. So we're going to add a new SSH key. And here, what you want to put in here is the public key. And I'm going to show you where to get that, right? So you're going to open up PuttyGen, and you want to generate a public-private key pair so we're going to generate you're going to move your mouse around this blank area and it's going to use that uh, the uh, entropy to create and create this key There's, <laughs> I, I like gave like a 10 billion mile overview it's much complicated than everything that I just said and when you're looking at security when you look at uh, security in IT crypt cryptography is one of the most difficult things in my opinion to understand is very difficult there's lots of math there's lots of theories and things like that so uh, kind of the 10 billion mile overview is we were using you know mouse movements to create entropy to help the encryption process to come up with these 
keys. It's, it, you're probably going to yell at me. That's way oversimplified, but that's, that's about where it's at. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take our, our public key. We're going to copy it. We're going to paste it in here. I'm going to call this Willy2. Now there's two pieces of this. That's the public. Now we have to have the private. So what we're going to do is we're going to save, by the way, before we do this, the type of key to generate. You do want to use this RSA. By default, this will work and do everything we need with a minimum bit count of 2048. So those default settings will work. Uh, you can save your public key and back it up. So we can do that real quick. So we'll click Save Public Key and we'll call this uh, Willy2 Public. And we'll save that. Now, the really important part of this is the saving the private key. Are you sure you want to save this key without a passphrase? So this gets into another thing that you should read up about is proper key management. You shouldn't just lay these, you know, leave these keys laying all over the place and letting have a lot of users have them and, and things like that. That's not good. So you do want to probably do a Google search and let's look at some key management. So for my example, I'm going to put it in a folder on the desktop. That is not where I store my keys or how I store my keys. It is for example only. It's just like using the username and password of UBNT. Don't do it. Are you sure you want to save this key without a passphrase? Yes. Now, it's going to ask us. So we're going to say this is Willy2 uh, private. And we'll save that. And so now we've got a public private key. So now we go back over here. And we're going to click Add SSH Key. And now if we create this droplet using the Willy2 key, it's going to spin up there in the background. And as soon as it's done, we're going to have an IP address, and then we're going to be able to go ahead and connect to that using the key. And I'll show you how that's done here in just a second. Okay, so our droplets create. So we're going to open PuTTY, and we're going to put the IP address in 178.62.254.8. Now, you have to remember that this is going to get you in as root, and you don't always want to run as root, but this is a good place to get in as root. And then you can create your other users. And DigitalOcean has excellent steps on how to create users, add them to the pseudo groups, and things like that. But this is the very first place where you get to generate a key pair and that you can add that to the server so you can get in as root. So we've got that. Then we're going to go down here to SSH. And we're going to go to, uh, let's see, we're going to go to auth right here. And it says private key for authentication. So we're going to go to browse. We're going to go to keys. We're going to go to Willy2 private. And then we're going to go to open. And it's going to say, yeah, do you want to trust this? You're going to say yes. We're going to say root. And it's going to authenticate with the public key. And now we are logged into the system. And that's it. So now you can go in there. You can uh, add your uh, other users, you can install your software, do whatever you want, make sure you put the firewall in, restrict 22, or just in the firewall, disable SSH after you've set up the keys until you need it. So that should do it. Once again, that DigitalOcean referral link is going to be down there. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe. Please comment and share. Please follow me on Twitter and Instagram. If you need consulting, the link is down there. And as always, we'll see you in the next video.